Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. We are continuing our slog through Lime 5, the book I helped write um, when I was working at Life Dynamics in Denton in the um, 1990s. And here again, we've got the section about coma, and I have no idea what was going through Mark's head when he selected the ones he would put in this category. Every single one of these cases resulted in death sometimes just in a matter of days. And to me, the idea, if you're looking at the woman wound up in a coma, you're wanting people to relate to the fact that her loved ones were left with this husk of what she used to be, months, years going by, and she's gone, but not gone. But Mark chose the ones Mark chose, so those are the ones that we're moving forward with and discussing. Uh, the first one covered is 19-year-old Angela Scott, who stopped breathing in the recovery room of National Abortion Federation member Atlanta William, uh, Women's Pavilion on June 2nd of 1979. Now, at the time Line 5 went to press, we only knew that 15-year-old Dolores Smith was left unattended with her anesthesia drip running while staff went to deal with Angela. Um, Angela slipped into a coma. She was transported to a hospital and she remained there until her death on June 11th. I've since learned that Dolores um, eventually wound up in a nursing home where she died on October 24th without ever regaining consciousness. And I've since learned that staff at Atlanta Women's Pavilion proceeded with an abortion on Dolores even after she had a negative pregnancy test. Now, the next case was 13-year-old Dawn Ravenel. A school counselor arranged for her to undergo an abortion behind her parents' backs on January 24th of 1985. Remember, this is a 13-year-old girl. Her 15-year-old boyfriend paid the $450 abortion fee with a credit card he'd borrowed from a relative. Now, the abortion was performed by Dr. Alan Klein and Dawn was not given enough anesthesia to get her the whole way through the procedure. So she started to vomit and choke. And instead of taking care of her, they just moved her into recovery and left her unattended until somebody noticed that she'd slipped into a coma. And only then did somebody think to call her parents. And Dawn died on February 11th without ever regaining consciousness. Now, Venus Ortiz and Dawn Mack also underwent fatal abortions at Eastern Women's Center. And at the time Lime 5 went to press, Venus was still comatose years later. Venus did not die until six years after the abortion that left her in a coma. <clears throat> then we had Jacqueline Reynolds. She was a 22-year-old mother of a four-year-old daughter when she underwent an abortion under general anesthesia on August 27th of 1986. The breathing tube had not been inserted properly. She turned blue from lack of oxygen and then lapsed into a coma. She never recovered from that coma and was pronounced dead on September 5th. Then we have Belinda Bird. She was the 69th of 74 women that Dr. Stephen Pine rushed through Inglewood Women's Hospital single procedure room. I didn't put the day. Belinda's abortion was performed on January 24th, 1987. Okay. So Pine finished Belinda's abortion in roughly nine minutes. They kept her in the recovery room only about seven minutes before they took her to the ward. Uh, she complained that she was weak and that her legs were going numb. Um, she collapsed in the bathroom around 7 p.m. She told a nurse that she was feeling weak again, and they waited another two hours after, well, she stopped breathing. They waited, they spent two hours trying to resuscitate her before they finally sent her to another hospital. Belinda was, for all intents and purposes, brain dead when she got to the qualified hospital and remained comatose until she was taken off life support on January 27th. Now, Belinda was the sixth 
woman to die from an abortion botched at Englewood Hospital. Kathy Murphy died in 1973, Lynette Wallace in 1975, Elizabeth Suji in 1978, and Cora Lewis in 1983. Then moving right along, we're back to the National Abortion Federation. On October 10th of 1989, 27-year-old Catherine Pierce died in a nursing home from abortion complications that had left her comatose since her March 11th abortion at Atlanta Surgery Center. Catherine had gone into cardiac arrest while left unattended in the recovery room. I think I'm going to have a heart attack and die from that surprise. And the last death noted in this section was Glenda Davis, a 31-year-old mother of two who went to Aaron Family Planning and had an abortion performed by Robert Hansen. During the abortion, she suffered a one and a half to two inch long wound in her uterine artery and vein complex, which caused massive bleeding. And after delaying, staffers decided that she needed to go to a hospital. Her husband spotted staff trying to transfer her from a wheelchair into a staffer's car. And he helped them get her into the car with the IV still in her arm. She had no blood pressure or pulse on arrival. She fell into a coma and died three years later. I'm sorry, three days later. So, again, these are all sad cases, but I have to question Mark's choice to put them under the category of coma. It would have been more appropriate to put Venus Ortiz there since it took her six years to die and she was not dead yet as of the timeline five went to press. But Mark is Mark. He does what he does.